Hey guys, and welcome to another one of my tutorials. Uh, in this video, I'll be showing you guys how to set up an AoE system in your game so that you can apply AoE damage or AoE healing or pretty much AoE anything. Uh, if you don't know what AoE is, it just stands for area of effect. So it's whenever you, you, know, you have an attack in a game where you press a button and it deals damage or it does something within a certain radius around you. So anything within that radius takes effect. A good example of this would be like a grenade. When you throw a grenade and it explodes, it does AOE damage, meaning that it damages anything that's around it. So I've actually gone ahead and set up a few little practical examples, because basically what I've done is I've created a system that can be reused for all sorts of different types of AOE effects. So you can see on the left here, we have a mine, which I'll show you in a second, and then we have this poison effect, and then we have some AOE attacks over here on the right. Now, they're not like super pretty, there's not a bunch of particle effects or anything like that, or animations hooked up. This is solely just focusing on like the logic behind applying the AoE damage. But keep in mind, as I'm showing you this, that all these uh, different little demos here are using the exact same code behind the scene, because I've written it in such a way that you can reuse it for pretty much any type of AoE damage. All right, so real quick, I'll just show you what it does. So over here, we have this little mine, and you'll see when I walk on this little red mine, it's gonna apply AoE damage to anybody within a certain radius. And it will draw a little circle to show you what's going on. So when I go to step on it, it explodes. And you can see me and the two other dudes here took damage because we were both in the radius of the AoE damage. And likewise, over here, I have this poison effect. So once you get inside of this little yellow sphere, it starts applying damage. You can see my health bar starts going down. And if I get out, my health bar stops. And then I also have a little ability here where I can heal, which also does AoE, or does it based off AoE. So if I press my heal button, you can see it spawns little heal volume. So anything inside this volume will heal. So you can see if I walk over to these guys and I stand between them and I press my heal button, it heals them up as well. And this is using the exact same logic as the poison and as the mine. But sometimes you need something a little bit more advanced because there's certain situations where you don't actually want to apply the AoE effect if you don't have line of sight. So a good example is this guy over here. So you can see I have a guy right here and he's on the other side of the wall. And if I come over here and I press uh, my attack button, which is going to spawn an AoE damage effect, you see it spawns this circle, but even though he's in the circle, he doesn't actually take damage. You can see I press it. He's clearly inside the circle, but he's not taking damage. And that's because you can see coming out of my character is a series of line traces that are checking to see if it hits the character. And so this is really good when you have something like a grenade in your game, where if the grenade spawns at the location of the player, for example, then it's going to hit anything that has line of sight. And obviously I'm just using the character's position, but you could apply this to a grenade and then, you know, if a grenade landed right here, it would still hit this guy, even though he's somewhat hidden. And you can see kind of the logic that's going on. It spawns a line trace that tries to hit the guy directly, but it hits the wall. So then it tries to go over the wall and then it hits him. So if, so if at least one of those lines hits him, then it says, okay, I have line sight of this guy and I can apply damage. So that's kind of what I'm going to be showing you guys how to set up. Again, these are just example use cases of how you might use something like this, but you can use this for all sorts of types of attacks and weapons in your game that need some sort of AoE um, effect to them. All right, so with that being said, let's jump into it. I'm going to go ahead and open up the Epic Game Launcher, and I'm on version 4.25.0. I highly recommend just being on that version or newer just to avoid any sort of issues with using an older engine version. I don't, I can't think of anything that's gonna cause an issue, but it's always best to be up to date with the tutorial. And then we're gonna select games down here at the bottom because we're making a game. And then we wanna use the third person. Why can't I find it? There it is, third person template. Hit next. And make sure you have blueprints selected and we don't need any starter content. So you can leave that as no starter content. And I'm just gonna call this AOE tutorial and then go ahead and create the project. And I'll be showing you guys how to set up this uh, health bar system too. I mean, it's a pretty simple little health bar and damage system that I have going, but I kind of needed it in order to show you the AOE stuff. So we're actually gonna be doing that first because without the health bar, you actually can't really tell what's going on too easily. So first things first, let's go ahead and create our health interface. And this is going to help us out when it comes to applying damage and healing. So if you right click and you go to blueprints and you select blueprint interface, we're going to create a blueprint interface. So click on that. And we're going to call this the health interface. And if you never used an interface before or you don't know what one is, it's basically 
just a blueprint that defines a bunch of functions. So like if you open it up and check it out, it kind of looks like a normal blueprint, but uh, it, it's like has a lot of stuff stripped away from it. The only real like functionality to it, if you want to call that, is this section over here where you can add functions. And basically any function you add here, you can then implement inside of any other blueprint that implements this interface. So it'll kind of make more sense once we actually do it. But for now, just come up here to the right and we want to add a few functions. We want to add a heal and we want this to take in a amount. So click this new parameter and hit float and we'll just call this the amount. We want another one for damage. So hit the little plus button and call it damage. And again, we want to have a float for the amount. And then we want one more. So click this again and call it get health as ratio. And what I mean by as ratio is that it's going to return the health from a value or as a value from zero to one. So if it returns zero, the character has no health. If it returns one, the character has full health. And we want this to have an output for the return value. And it's going to be a float and it's going to be called health as ratio. Okay, so now that we have our health interface, we can go ahead and hook it up to our character. So if we come back here and we select this character and we go to the edit third person character blueprint, we basically want to add this or we want to add this interface to this character so that he implements this interface. And what that's going to do is make it so essentially later we're going to have it, we're going to have it set up so anybody who implements this interface and even if it's not a character, like maybe it's a fence in your game that you want to be able to take damage so you can, you know, break the fence or whatever. Anything that implements this interface is going to be able to take damage and be healed and also have a health bar above it if you want. So to add an interface to a class, we just come up here to class settings. And then over here on the right, under interfaces, hit add and then search for the interface, which of course is the health interface. And then go ahead and select that. And you can see after I do that, over here on the left, you'll get the three functions that we declared inside the interface that are now defined inside of your blueprint. So we have heal, damage, and get health as ratio. Now if you don't see these over here, it's because you're on an older version of Unreal, and in order to see them you have to right click and search for them, and there'll be an option inside of here to implement the event. But I highly recommend updating to a newer version because it makes it a lot simpler. Alright, so now that we have these um, functions declared here, we want to go ahead and define them so that they actually have functionality applied to them. So if we double click on one, I'm just going to start with heal, or maybe you have to right click, yeah, right click and say implement interface. It's going to create the heal event for you. So this event's going to get called whenever the heal interface event's going to get called. So essentially we want to do in here whatever we want to do to heal our character. Um, and currently we don't have any concept of health, so we're going to need to add some health variables. And I'm just going to add two. I'm going to want add one for the like the current health so I'm just gonna call it health and then I'm gonna add another one for the max health just so we know like what the max health of the character is and then I'm gonna set max health to something like a thousand and I'm also gonna make it blueprint read only since we don't ever want it to change so inside of event heal we're basically gonna take the health the current health and we're gonna plus so float plus and we're going to add whatever amount they pass to us. And then we're going to set the health to that value. Um, but before we go ahead and set it up, we want to make sure that we clamp the value between zero and whatever max health is. So that way his health can't get above his max health and it also can't get below zero. So we'll say clamp, uh, clamp float. And of course the min value is zero and the max value is whatever our max health is. And then we can hook that up like so. And we want to do the exact same thing for the damage, except we want to subtract. So over here on the right, right click, implement function. And I'm just going to go ahead and copy this, except for the heal node. Copy and paste. And hook this up. And then the amount's going to go into here, except we need to change this to a subtract first. So I'm going to delete this. And I'm going to say float minus. So we want to do the health minus the amount and plug that into the value. All right, so now our player can heal and he can also get damaged. And then finally, we need to write this function to get the health as a ratio. So this one you can just double click on because it's a function since it returns a value. So to get the health as a ratio, we're simply gonna take the health and divide it by the max health. So get health and we'll say float divide by the max health. 
And we're going to need this ratio value for the health bar later. All right, so now our player has a concept of health. He can take damage, he can be healed, and he has this handy little function that gets his health as a value from 0 to 1. So the next thing we want to do is add a health bar above our character so that we can actually see his current health. And to do that, we're going to need to create a widget or a user widget. So come back here and we right click and go to user interface. And right here we have the widget blueprint. We want to create one of these guys. So select this and I'm just going to call this the health bar and press enter. So if we double click on this to open it up to edit it. Um, currently the size is pretty large, but we want to have this be a health bar, which is typically, you know, long and, and skinny and flat. So we're going to change the, uh, up here at the top right, we're going to change it from full screen to custom, just so we can view it better. And then we want to change the width to something like 250 and the height to something like 20. So it looks more like a health bar. And then over here on the left, uh, we don't actually need this canvas panel. We want to add something called a size box. So we search for size box up here. And what the size box is going to do is that it's going to actually assure that it's actually whatever size we set it to. So these values up here, this is kind of an important thing to know. These values that you set up here, they don't actually change anything. They just change the way you're viewing it right here in the editor, but it doesn't actually change the size of it in game. If you want to actually set the size of something to a specific value, you need to use a size box. So we're going to set the size box and then over here, we're going to select width override and height override, and we're going to set it to whatever values we have up here. So 250 and 20. And again, this is just going to assure that it's this size in the actual game. And then inside of the size box, we're going to use a progress bar for the health bar. So drag that in and see it populates it. Uh, if you've never used a progress bar before, they're really simple. They just have this percent value, which goes from zero to one. So you can see if you slide this um, up and down, the progress bar goes up and down. And we'll change it to a nice green color. So it kind of looks more like health, something like this. And there we go. But Obviously, we need to actually set this to his health. We can't just say, okay, the health is 0.6, and then we're done, because obviously the person's health is not always going to be 0.6. It's going to be whatever you know their current health is at that given time. So we want to bind this to the player's health so that when the health changes, this bar changes. And to do that, we can use this little bind button over here and then hit create binding. And that's going to bring us into the health bar's uh, graph tab, and it's going to create a little get percent node for us. I'm just going to rename this so it's a little more accurate. We'll call it get health percent. So inside of here, we somehow need to get access to the player that the health bar is above. And we need to call that get health as ratio function. We want to return that. Um, but before we can really do that, we need to kind of set it up so that our health bar is above the character's head. So back in the third person character blueprint, if we go to the viewport tab, just so we can kind of see what's going on, although it's not going to be that useful yet. Um, we'll hit add component up here and we'll search for a widget because we want to add a widget. Hit select. By default, it adds it to his origin. So we want to just drag it up so it's somewhere above his head. And then over here on the right, we want to select the widget that we actually want to display. So of course, that's going to be our health bar widget. So over here, we'll just select health bar. And then you can see it's kind of a little bit too big and the wrong shape. And that's because by default, it's in world space. We want to change this to screen space, and then we want to set the draw at desired size to true. And you can't actually see it right now because it's in screen space, and I think screen space things don't render in this view. But if we go into the actual game and we play it, you can see I have the health bar above my head. Um, but it's not currently bound to my health yet. So to do that, we can come back to the third person character, and we can go to the event graph, and we basically want to, in begin play, we want to tell the health bar that the person whose health you're representing is us. So we'll say event begin play, and then we'll drag in our widget. Now, by default, or I mean, so this widget is just a widget component. It doesn't have any idea, at least this variable doesn't know that it's actually this health bar. So in order to get the widget that the widget component represents, if you want to think of it that way, you have to use the function get um, get user widget object. That's what it is. Yeah, get user widget object. So if you select that, 
it's going to get the widget that this widget represents. And of course, we know this is a health bar, so we can cast to a health bar. And now that we have that, we'll have access to any properties inside of our widget. So essentially what we want to do is we want to make a little function or a variable inside of our health bar where we can set it. We can essentially store a copy of ourselves so that the health bar knows you know, which character it's representing. So back in the health bar, we can do that real quick. Come back here to the graph. And we want to create a variable. So hit variable. And we're going to call this the health interface. So what this is, actually, let's change the variable type first. Change it to a health interface. So essentially, our health bar is going to be storing a reference to the health interface that it represents. And we want to, actually, yeah, this is good. So now that we have our health interface stored, we can come back to our third person character and we can drag off of our health bar. We can say set health interface, put this up. So the health interface is actually going to be our self because the way interfaces work is, I don't know, I don't know if you guys know or if the, if the person watching currently knows C++ or not, but the way health interfaces work, or sorry, the way interfaces work in general is that when you implement an interface like we did over here, it actually adds the interface as a parent of this class so that this class becomes a child of the health interface in this case. So technically, our third person character is a health interface because it's a child of it. So we can actually cast ourselves to a health interface um, with no problem. So we can say git ref to self, git reference to self. And then you can see we can't, oh, I guess we can't add that up directly. Um, I guess uh, that's confusing. I, I, would I would have expected to have to cast to health interface or health bar or health interface, sorry and then convert and hook this up. But it looks like it's gonna let us just hook it up directly. So we can just go ahead and do that. Cause again, we are a health interface since we implement that interface. So hopefully that wasn't too confusing. This is all it really is in the end. We get the user widget object, we cast it to a health bar widget, and then inside of that health bar, we set the health interface to ourselves. So the health bar knows, you know, which character is representing. All right, so back over here, we finally just need to write this function. So we can drag in our health interface and we can call our handy little git health as ratio. We'll just kind of hook this up. And then hopefully now when we run it, we should see a full green health bar. Or actually, no, we're not yet because we don't we haven't set our health to anything. So we go back to our third person character. We want to set our starting health to our max health to start with. And we could just type a thousand here, but that's kind of a bad thing to do because then if you change the max health, the health isn't going to update as well. So a better thing to do is just say set health to the max health like this and begin play. So that way, whatever you change the max health to, the health will be updated as well. So now if we run this, you can see our health is full green. And just to make sure it's working, I'm just going to set this to half of our max health just to make sure and kind of show you guys what's going on. So now our health should be half of our max health. Um, and that actually did not work. Oh, divided by two, not divided by 0 0.5. There we go. So when we divide our max health by two, and we set that to our health, you can see our health bar is showing that we have half health. Okay, so essentially up to this point, all we've really done is just set up a health system. It doesn't really have anything to do with the AOE stuff yet. We'll be covering that in part two, but this kind of just sets it up so that we can actually see our health. Um, it's gonna make it easier to understand what's going on. So with that being said, I will see you in part two.